Welcome to session 2 of uh, HyperMesh uh, Radio's interface demo. Uh, I am Prashant from Altair Engineering India. So in session 1, uh, so I did the demo on uh, the uh, creation of material and properties and how to update that uh, to the model. And we also discussed in the beginning uh, regarding uh, the mesh quality requirement for uh, uh, the explicit analysis. So in the mesh quality, um, so I got some of the feedbacks that uh, my stress was only on the element size and uh, I didn't stress on uh, any of the other quality parameters. Uh, yeah, so just to clarify, yeah, uh, yes, uh, from the meshing perspective, uh, for the explicit, uh, one of the very important parameters is on the element size. So totally the explanation was on uh, how you have to choose uh, the element size. But with respect to the other quality parameters, uh, uh, if you don't have any other guidelines, then you can just maintain the hypermesh default quality parameters uh, as the other quality parameters. And concerning the uh, mesh flow, you can maintain the generic guidelines, uh, uh, like we should we expect a neat uh, flow of mesh uh, with with maybe less number of trias, say like 5% of trias. So this is the general, general requirement. But uh, yeah, the stress of the, start, the starting point is uh, of course on the element size, which has an effect, which has a direct impact on the time step and followed with the runtime. Okay, so that was uh, uh, one clarification from the uh, session one. Okay, now moving to session two. Uh, in session two, the focus will be on uh, uh, connections. Okay, so here uh, in this section, uh, I'll be showing uh, uh, how to create uh, different types of connection, whether it may be spot and uh, make or the bolted connections, are the simplest uh, connections using uh, the rigid bar bodies and tight contact or tight connections. So we'll be seeing all these things in uh, this session. Okay, moving to the model. So here uh, we have uh, the model uh, which we were working on uh, uh, in the session one. So as you can see, I have created all the materials and uh, the properties. So they are all created now and updated to the, the model. Now moving on to the connections. First, let me take uh, the simplest connection which is a rigid body for which so in the last session, you also saw like um, I use the rigid body to make any component as rigid. So that was uh, the last step in the session one. But as such, uh, the rigid body we also use for the connections. Okay, so now let me create a collector for that. Okay, so this, as I mentioned, it is a rigid. So here it is for connection. So if you recall from uh, uh, the previous session, this model has uh, many connections already built. So I'll be showing some connections which are not complete. Okay. Now, uh, so between the tube section and the panel, so we have the MIG welding. Okay. So we have the patch-wise uh, MIG welding. So at the later part, I'll call all those collectors so that I can realize those uh, MIG welding. But here, let me take maybe like one patch, maybe from here to here. You can also represent, of course, we suggest uh, for a spot and MIG connections, it is, it is, uh, it'll be good if you use our regular uh, connectors uh, to represent that. But uh, for various reasons, like uh, some people use some common models between uh, say OptiStrap and uh, uh, radios and uh, they want to stick maybe like one type of connections for whatever reason you can use even our regular this rigid elements also okay so here if you want uh, the good result extraction of uh, these weld then we expect node matching which is again difficult anyway but I will show these connections how to do this uh, so as I explained in the previous session, uh, when you open this uh, rigid body 
panel in your uh, uh, system it will come to this default uh, view like this but always you have to use multiple nodes and calculated nodes and I will create the rigid say between two nodes okay so for radios the independent node should be completely free that's why I'm going by this approach so if you go by this approach and if you review the element what I created you can see that I have dependent and dependent node which are connected and my independent node is totally free okay so this is how uh, the connection has to be the independent node should not sit on node of any other element so if you have that type of connection, you will face the issue during the run. And also, as a generic live guideline, like uh, there should not be any dependency. If I create any rigid like this, okay, so it will lead to dependency. That you can check in uh, F9. If I check dependency, it will show you dependency. So even this is not allowed. Okay, so your connection should not be like that. Okay, so this is this may be one of the uh, simplest connection. But then this, like if you have, uh, like let's say if you want to do a MIG welding between uh, like this and this region, we suggest the other better option which is uh, going with connectors. Okay, yeah, so this is one way of uh, uh, connecting. Now on the other side, now here I will use uh, uh, the MIG welding. Uh, so here in radios, uh, the meshing is, uh, um, uh, the welding is a mesh independent. Okay, so we don't expect the node matching, that is the good part. So whenever you create a welding, it will always ensure that weld element is normal to the surface. Okay, unlike here, see now if you create, if you see my weld elements, they are like, they are not normal because I am getting into node to node, so I have the oblique connections. So if I am seeing some tensile force, then I have to do many more, uh, I have to resolve the things, so I have to get the pure uh, tensile force maybe. So I have to struggle here to get that uh, proper results, but if I go with my uh, MIG weld or spot weld, the weld element will be always normal to the surface. So, which is uh, quite neat and good to see these uh, results and uh, even uh, to create also, I don't have to worry about any node matching between the two panels. So, let's see how to create it. So, to create that, I'll go to this uh, 1D and I'll go to connectors. Okay, and I'll go to spot. So, here we don't differentiate between the spot weld or a MIG weld. Okay. So for us, what is MIG is, a continuous spot is a MIG. Means, if I ensure that each element is having one weld, one weld element, it means that I have a MIG welding. So it means I have a continuous welding. So if I have, if I have a spot welding, then of course uh, I'll specify some pitch. So with respect to each pitch, I'll be having, may, say like one weld element. So, as such, uh, we don't differentiate, but of course, uh, uh, after creating this, I'll be showing the properties. So, if you have any specific properties for uh, these things, you can always uh, change and uh, update that. But otherwise, from the creation point of view, we don't differentiate much between uh, the spot and uh, MIG melting. So, MIG means we just ensure that at every element, we have one, at every shell element, we have one weld element. Okay. Now, I came to spot here. And uh, uh, either I should have uh, the node location, normally like uh, if the CAC people are providing you the weld line or weld points, uh, you can directly create the, uh, you can directly create, you can directly use the points itself or you can uh, create the nodes on that and you can use the nodes, okay. So in the absence of that, I can just pick the node itself. It is just a location, okay. So it is not here the connection is happening through a contact which I will show you later but uh, it is not that 
I'm directly connecting the available element to this one. It is just a location. The location can be something like even this also. Okay. So I'm just picking some locations. Okay. So this will be my say weld location. And I have to say like uh, between uh, which two components. So in this case, uh, it is these two. Yeah, it is selected. And I have to say the type of welding. In this case, it is, I'll go with the type 2 spring. So we have other uh, advanced, uh, so in the, when I go with the type uh, 2 spring, the belt will be represented using type 13 spring. Uh, but we have other advanced uh, welding also, which is uh, the hexam based uh, welding. Uh, you can use that as well. So here I'm using uh, type 2 spring. And this diameter has nothing to do with as such uh, uh, the diameter of uh, uh, the physical material or any other things. So I will just go with the fire mill. But tolerance plays uh, some important role. It is the search tolerance between uh, uh, two panels. Okay. So you have to, if the panels are uh, quite apart, you have to be careful of this uh, tolerance. Okay. Now here I'll just specify maybe some 10. Okay. And also, in this case, if you see, it is a curved tube and a flat plate. Uh, so I will use one more option just to make sure that welding happens properly. I will click this non-normal projection. Okay. So now I'm done with all the selections. Okay. Now if I create, if I say create now, it will create all the weld elements. But before that, I want to show you something here. Okay, just see here now there is nothing called groups. Okay, and number of property, properties are 9 and set is 176. Okay, just uh, yeah, have a look at uh, these things. Now I will say create. Okay, so I said create. If you see it created something called groups. Okay, and uh, now the set score increased from 176 to 180 and property from 9 to 10. So when we create any welding in the background actually three happen, three operations happens uh, together. One is when we say this uh, welding it will create a weld element which as I told it is normal to the surface. Okay and here it's a mesh independent welding so uh, the weld element creation is one. Next the connection between this weld element and the component is established using a tied contact, which is type 2 contact. So if you expand this, you will see that it's a type 2 contact. So it has established a contact between the node of a spring element and the, ele the shell element. Okay, so this has slave and the element as a master. So like that it has established one like a type 2 contact between these two. So the spring creation is one creating the tight contact is the other and the third one is also creating a property for the spring. Okay. So these, thing, these three things happen automatically when you create uh, the welding. And of course it has created these uh, connectors. The, uh, the green uh, dots what you are seeing that we call it as connectors which you have might have used it in uh, other user profiles also. So connectors makes our life easy. Uh, so if I create the connectors, I can unrealize it and I can re-realize, I can change the type of welding, I can do all those things. Okay. Uh, so now coming to the property, so I'll come back to this. See this property is what it has created it is suitable for a particular unit system. Okay, so this property is suitable for a unit system of a kilonewton, millimeter, millisecond and kg. That's why like uh, you can see the entries, the stiffness is very low. Okay, and it is calling some function, even that function also will be in a different unit system. So basically this property what it has created, it is not useful for us. 
because we are following a unit system of a Newton millimeter ten second. Okay, that's fine. So what uh, we have to do is uh, once we are done with all the uh, welding of this model, so I'll be creating uh, my own weld property and I'll be just updating all these weld elements. But what you have to keep in mind is uh, uh, when you create the welding using the connectors, uh, it creates the automatic property. So later you have to change that property if you are using the unit system of uh, Newton millimeter ten second, and that is what we are using it here. Okay. So this one point you have to keep in mind. So I will come back to this point at a later stage. So now we have created uh, uh, rigid connections and uh, we have created a MIG weld. So now this entire vehicle, it is not connected. Actually there are many locations where it requires uh, welding. Okay. So from the CAD using the, uh, I have created a XML file. So the XML file has the information of uh, the weld location and which are the two components or three components which it has to connect. So all this information will be there in the XML file. Okay. So now my job is uh, simple to weld this. So what I am doing is Okay, so I am importing one uh, XML file which is basically a connector file. Okay, so now you can see that uh, so wherever I need the welding. So this is pre-created means um, this either has to come from uh, your PLM system or uh, people use uh, the from the CAD data they create these connectors. Okay, so this is something which will take time. Uh, if you don't have a established system uh, in place, uh, creating welding for the full vehicle, it will take uh, some good amount of time. So here, that's why like I have created uh, all these things and kept ready. Now, realizing for me is uh, one step activity. Okay, again, I'll go to OND connectors. So since all the informations are already present in this one, okay, now I'll directly go to realize, okay, but still I have to choose which type of uh, 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 the weld I want. So the weld type is same. Again, options I have to ensure that I have the same thing. So here I will choose all the connectors and either I would have either switched off this or unselect this, it is already created. Okay, and I will say realize. Okay, so you can see here it is uh, realizing the characters and uh, updating the properties and uh, doing all the stuff. So now it is creating a type 2 interface which is tight contact. Between the weld element nodes as the slave and uh, the shell component as the master. Okay, so one, one tight contact like for the one side and the other tight contact for the other side. Okay, so it has created uh, the welds and it is telling there are some welds which are failed. Okay, you can, uh, if you have observed that uh, it showed some 106 
uh, as the failed connectors. Okay, so that I attribute mainly due to maybe the distance or the tolerance what I have chosen here. So what I will do is uh, now I need to work on them also. Okay, so here I will switch on my connector browser. So I'll go to view and uh, switch on the connector browser. So I'll see this connector. So here you can see that there are some failed connectors as well. Okay, I'll sort it by the state. So it will list only the unrealized connectors. Okay, so now I have isolated only those connectors which are not realized. Okay, so for me like uh, in this case the reason looks that it is the question of uh, tolerance, they are uh, away. So what I will do is, I will say all these things uh, initially to unrealize. Okay, so now they are at the open stage for further meet, for further to realize. So I will go to spot, realize, I will increase the tolerance. Okay, and again I will choose all these uh, connectors. So they are the same or not six connectors which got uh, failed uh, in the uh, in the first level when I was doing the uh, welding. Now I will say realize. Yeah, so now we can see all one not six are realized. So it means it was the issue with the tolerance. So sometimes it so happened that um, if you are doing uh, let's say uh, manually if you are connecting something or if you have uh, some script. Uh, the other possibility is why it get failed is uh, let's say for one of the connectors you have not picked two components. It has only one component. So then it doesn't know like uh, where is the other component. So then it then also it will fail like it was not able to find it. Okay. So that is also one of the very uh, commonly common issue why the welding gets failed. Okay, now we have uh, all the weldings realized. Okay, now I don't uh, need this browser anymore. I'll come back to this. Okay, so these are all uh, the connectors what I realized. Uh, they are mainly the uh, they are mainly the MIG welding type of uh, uh, connectors. Okay, so let me show all the connectors. Yeah. So if you see the welding is continuous in all the elements. Uh, so I have the connectors for each shell elements to make sure that it's a MIG welding. Okay, in a similar way, uh, just to showcase, I have made one other section So this if you see, so here I just want to showcase you how we can do the spot welding. So here I have connect, here I have created the connectors at a regular distance. Okay, now I have to realize them. So before I do that, yeah, so yeah, these are unrealized. So this let me hide this okay so now I have the connectors here again the procedure remains same so 1D connectors spot realize I will use these options so I will select these connectors okay that already has the information on which all the components they have to connect and all that so I will say realize 
So everything is realized, 52 connectors are realized. If anything is failed, you will get the information there. Okay. So now it is uh, done from the welding point of view. So I created all the weldings, both MIG and uh, SPOT. So now we'll come back here. So now it created uh, multiple collectors. So whichever it is starting with uh, uh, the RW and spot weld, they are all the welding collector, welding uh, connect, welding collectors what it has created. So these are all the weld elements and they are all type 13 springs. Okay. So why I have isolated this thing because uh, as I told you I have to change uh, uh, the property of this one. Uh, so what the property what I have is, uh, uh, is not okay. So let me create a property and uh, update to all these uh, weld elements. Okay, so I will do that now. So create a property which is weld. So this is uh, again weld is a T type 13 spring. Okay. So here you have to be careful about uh, the mass and in the earlier uh, other springs what I created if you saw if you have observed I have created a mass of 2 e power minus 4 tons which is 200 grams okay but here we have thousands of welding okay so here uh, if you use uh, maybe a higher mass the sum total of all those springs will be a huge mass uh, so we have to be careful uh, like what uh, mass we use it here so I'm just using maybe like a one gram low value okay and here again it is a high stiffness so we are representing it like a non rupturable spot weld but of course as I am telling you uh, whether it is a big weld or spot weld or even sometimes for the purpose of glue also we use the same element so the way behavior changes is the way you are inputting the properties here. So if it is a glue and if you have some data, of course you can change uh, these differences. Okay, and if you have any rupture data for uh, uh, the welding, uh, so you can enter that. So by that, whenever that force or displacement, the value criteria is reached, the weld will rupture. And this is also quite important because uh, in uh, the entire assembly when uh, the weld fails, the load path will change. So of course when you are making a detailed study, it is important to rupture the weld at a proper force. Okay, But for, for those things you need to have uh, the good data on uh, uh, the weld failures. Okay, so I created uh, uh, the properties. Okay, for the weld. Now what I will do is I'll just uh, take all these components. Okay. So whenever we, we make the multiple selection and if it shows like this hash means it is like they have multiple properties. Okay, not a single one, they have multiple ones. But now I need to move it to a, a single one, that's why I'll move it to the one what I created. Okay, so I have changed the property. Now I should have many empty properties. So just let me clear off them. Yeah, so I have many properties. I'll clear them. Okay, good. Okay, so welding is done. Now 
the last uh, type of uh, connections what I have is uh, the tight connection. Okay, so tight connections means now even when we created the welding as uh, I showed you the weld element is connected to shell uh, using a tight connection. Okay, so this is a mesh independent welding. So when we do the welding uh, it creates in the background automatically the tight connection. So this is one application of a tight contact in this case which is automatically getting created when you do the welding. But uh, you may require this uh, tied in the uh, other regions also like now in this case I want to tie this uh, seat foam to the backrest. Okay so I should uh, you can assume that you have a glue over there so it is just a permanent connection between this uh, seat foam and the uh, back member. So I want to create that. Uh, and of course I am not much interested in studying uh, uh, in what is happening in the connections and all that. You can do that as well. We had a tight breaker where you can specify the criteria of uh, uh, the stress and the energies so upon reaching that the tie also will break. That's possible. But otherwise there are many instances where uh, we just want to tie one surface to other surface or one component to other component. So in that situation also you can use uh, this tie contact. Okay, so let me create that uh, uh, tie contact. So this is basically a contact, it's a kinematic contact. So now before creating that I'll just uh, isolate these parts so that it is easier for me to work. Okay, so I have only that. Fine. I will go to the regular method, say I will say create and contact, okay, so this I will name it as tied, tied and the type is for this one, the type is, it is type 2, okay, so it is a type 2 contact, so we have to, for this the selection is we have to say like which are all the slave and uh, which is the master, so I'll pick, uh, we can pick it by components, the master. So I will just pick this as the master. Okay. Fine. And for, uh, for nodes, there are different ways to select. Okay. Now here I'm going by Okay. So I selected that face. Okay. So in the background it creates uh, uh, the required set, group node set for uh, those nodes. So here you have to keep one thing in mind. See here it was easier for me to select uh, uh, these nodes. But you may face a situation where uh, it will not be so easy to select the nodes. So you may select some extra nodes. Okay. So if you select the extra nodes, there is a possibility of you facing an error that uh, there are slave nodes which are not finding the projection with the master. So just to avoid uh, those scenarios, uh, we have a very neat option where I can say ignore as one. So which will take care of all those uh, mistakes what you have done by selecting. So even if there are some slave nodes which are not finding the projection, they will be removed from that uh, tight contact automatically. Okay. So this is a very neat option. Okay. So I just created a tight contact uh, between these two. So if you just uh, review this, it shows you the master component in blue and all the slave nodes in red. So in this case, uh, I doubt that these nodes may face may may face issue. They may not find uh, the master. Okay, but I don't have to worry because I have used my option, so that will take care of that. Uh, if it is not projecting, that will be removed from the solver uh, from the contact. Okay. So I'm done with uh, the connections. Okay. 
so now the model is well connected so we have all the property and materials and uh, we have all the uh, connections as well and uh, okay so one thing what I missed here is uh, the bolted connection which is also there in the list uh, that is why because uh, in the first uh, session I already showed you how to create a bolt okay so how we create the bolt is uh, uh, the good way to create is of course we use uh, the type 13 spring again here even for bolt uh, so it will be a type 13 spring between uh, two rigid bodies so if you see here in this model so there are series of bolts which have been created between two rigids and a spring element okay. so just uh, Okay, you can see this. So this is one way of uh, modeling a bolt. Uh, if you're not, uh, if you're not that much of focused on uh, the study of uh, the bolt uh, in this region and all that, you can use the rigid bolt also. So rigid bolt, it is quite simple. So now there is already a bolt here. Okay, I'm just uh, showing you how to create maybe a rigid bolt. Okay. So which I think you have used it already quite extensively. Okay. So the one way to create uh, the proper bolt in radius is uh, what I have already done here. So between uh, two digits, I have created a type 13 spring element which is having the high stiffness, uh, which we saw in the session one. Uh, but if you want to create a simple uh, rigid bolt, okay, then of course you can just create one uh, simple rigid connection also. Okay, so I will use. Uh, So I have to use a rigid connector. So I want to use uh, the connector which I have created. Yeah, that is this one. Okay. So this is simple. Now I'll go to rigids, my standard options. So I will just select the set of nodes on both the components and I will create it. Okay. Let me switch it on. Yes. This is also you can say it is a simple rigid board representation. Okay, so fine. Yeah, so this comes to the end of this uh, session two, session two where uh, I demoed uh, different types of uh, connections. So in the session uh, three, we will focus on uh, uh, applying the loads and body conditions. Okay, thank you.